From the flow of blood in our veins to the roar of a rocket engine, fluid mechanics is all around us. Join me on a journey to uncover the secrets of this fascinating field and discover how it shapes our world. Fluid mechanics is a field of science that studies the behavior of fluids, including liquids and gases. Its history dates back to ancient times, with Archimedes' principle of buoyancy being one of the earliest known works. In the 17th century, Pascal and Fermat developed hydrostatics, while Bernoulli's principle of fluid dynamics was introduced in the 18th century. The 19th century saw the development of equations that describe the motion of fluids, known as the Navier-Stokes equations. In the 20th century, computational fluid dynamics revolutionized the field. Today, fluid mechanics continues to be researched with applications in fields such as engineering, biology, and environmental science. Let's say we have a cylinder with an area of one its face is called A. Now let's say a fluid with some velocity V pass through this cylinder. The height of this cylinder would be the distance that is velocity times time. Now the change in volume would be area times height. Let's say we have a funnel. We see that the change in volume must be equal on both sides of the funnel. However, in the smaller side we see that water flows faster. That's because velocity is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. Let's explain Pascal principle. Let's say we have a hydraulic press system. This law tells us pressure change at any point in a confined, incompressible fluid is transmitted throughout the fluid, such that the same change occurs everywhere. Now let's imagine a bottle floating in water. We have the force due pressure of the water, the force due to atmospheric pressure in the bottle and the weight of the bottle. If we do some algebraic manipulation, we see that the difference in pressure is just density times, gravity times height. From our free body diagram, we see that the change, the difference between the force due to atmospheric pressure and force due to water pressure is equal to the weight of the object we call this difference buoyance force. Now let's explain Bernoulli's principle. Imagine we have pipe, and due to pressure the liquid displaces delta x. The change in work in this side is just force due to pressure times distance, but area times height its volume. We see the same equation for work on the other side of the pipe. However, the sign change because the force is negative. Now, if we add both changes of works, we find the total change in work for this system. Now, let's find the change in kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. We see that it's just the difference between kinetic energy and gravitational potential in Rergy. But since change in gravitational potential plus change in kinetic energy is the change in work, we replace the value of change of work in this equation. Now, doing some algebraic manipulation, we reach the following formula. But since mass divided by volume is just the density, we now have the following equation from which we have reached Bernoulli's equation. Now, from the Bernoulli's principle, we see that pressure is inversely proportional to velocity. If we see the flow of air in an object, we see the air above the surface has to travel more distance. Therefore, there is higher velocity above the object that means there is lower pressure above the object. Now let's do some examples. If you blow a thin stream of air with a speed of 7 m per s out of your mouth, what must be the overpressure in your mouth? Assume that the speed of the air in your mouth is nearly zero. Now since the height is zero, we can solve for pressure in Bernoulli's equation and find that the overpressure is just 29. 